Live from the Wubble, I would like to welcome in WNBPA President Becca Ogumake and Vice President Sue Bird joining the jump. Thank you guys so much for taking the time. And you both just announced that you are, in fact, going to resume games. So, NECA, you guys always have so many smart conversations. What were the talks that led to that decision? Um, well, you know, uh, last night I was one of the teams that was uh, scheduled to play. Mm -hmm. And um, we entered the arena when DC and Atlanta were having those discussions. Uh, as you can imagine, it was such an intense time and there was a lot of emotion around not just playing, but also, you know, the occurrences of the world outside of the Wubble right now mm -hmm. and how that affects players. And um, we came to the consensus that as all teams were even arriving, that we would just, you know, take take these nights off and we headed back we had a vigil and we had a very much needed player meeting last night at which we were able to kind of flesh some things out hear people out and understand exactly how we wanted to move forward with the season so what is moving forward what does that look like to you sue um, it's pretty simple for us you know we're kind of using this opportunity to recommit to what we came here for in the first place and I think it's been, um, you know, pretty obvious. We're here to say her name. We're here to amplify the voices of the women in this league, but also, you know, women of color everywhere. And the way that we can do that in the WNBA is to play. That is our platform. That is our stage. That is where our impact is. And I think collectively we came together, talked about a lot of different things, and that's where we all landed. Um, that's the one thing I think we're most proud of as a league. So much happens, you know, even a team showing up you know, for tip off and not wanting to play. And mm -hmm. we just move with each other. We adjust, we listen, and from there, we, we decide what's best. Um, and that's, I think, what you're seeing now unfolding. So you've been with the league such a long time. How have you seen all of this change for the WNBA in terms of the visibility, the cohesion between players and teams to get to this point where you are now? Yeah, I mean, you kind of said it. I think the, um, the fact that we have support from our league, from our ownership, that has evolved and continued to evolve and has been really important for us to be able to take these stands. Um, you know, I, I've said recently that the interesting thing about being a women's professional basketball player is it's never been about basketball for us. <laughs> Everybody talks about all these other things. Mm -hmm. And then you fast forward 10, 15, 20 years, you know, for me it's been that long. And now people are telling us to stick to sports. You know, so we've, we've found our voice. We've understood who we are as a league. We're now being authentic to that. And what you're seeing now is, is real. It's the real deal. And Nick, as the president of the Players Association, how do you feel that the players have been represented with conversations with the league just leading up to the Wubble and then now in terms of what should happen going forward? Um, quite frankly, you know, as you said, we've been we've been there every step of the way. Um, and I'd have to say that it's been a work in progress, especially since I've entered the league. Things mm -hmm. have definitely um, changed. Uh, but I do feel as though there's always something that we can continue to do better. Um, I can say that the relationship that's being fostered between the league and its players is certainly evolving. Mm -hmm. And players are being heard more. Players are fe feeling more comfortable to have their voices out there, um, especially as, um, as we consider the things that need to happen for us to be able to play um, in conducive conditions while also, you know, amplifying our platforms because that's just a non-negotiable for us as WNBA players. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, NECA. Thank you so much, Sue. Best of luck going forward. We will be following you every step of the way. All right, I'm now rejoined by Matt Barnes, Richard Jefferson. Guys, the WNBA playoff games were postponed, but really, it's not just last night that we're talking about this movement back a few years, the WNBA players have been so dedicated to publicly, visibly. How much do you think the NBA has followed the WNBA's lead in all of this? Perhaps? I think we can learn a lot because they've always, since their inauguration, been fighting for equal footing. Mm -hmm. So if any people outside of the African -Amer American race in the WNBA can understand what it's like to fight for equality and equal footing, it's the women in the WNBA. So my hat's off to them. They've led the way in this. Like, like Sue said, people came to the gym and didn't feel like playing, so we all just kept it moving and supported each other so we can learn a lot hats off to the WNBA continue to do what you guys are doing we're watching we're listening we're following along and we love what you guys are doing yeah and like for me as a kid I remember one of the first things that I ever 
kind of remember hearing about was Billie Jean King and the mm -hmm. Battle of the Sexes. And then you fast forward and you see, you know, the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team and all of their fights for equality. So the women have always been in the forefront. Right. And sometimes they don't get the attention that they deserve and have earned and respected. So I love the fact that they have... Uh, been so vocal and they we have supported them they have supported us and you've seen other sports just like we talked about uh, with with baseball and and football supporting what bas the basketball players are doing inside the bubble it's the same thing like we support the US women's national soccer team and then they support the WNBA it is all a fight for equality and we are all in this together absolutely yeah and look like every Women in the United States who earn cents on the dollar of what men make. The women of the WNBA certainly earn less money than the NBA players make, both in terms of salary and endorsements. So the fact that they have put themselves out here to this degree and have been doing it for so long, they have been risking, frankly, more, more of their security, more of their safety, more of their paycheck, because they have less of it. And I think that that is so impressive and a true dedication to the commitment they have. I agree 100%, but I think what keeps them not safe, but they're together. Yes. You know what I mean? Just like if the NFL six years or four years ago now, Roger Goodell wants to say, I wish you would listen to Cap. I don't want to hear none of that BS. If the NFL players would have need with Cap, they couldn't have took everybody out. They right. couldn't have blackballed just Cap. Yep. You know what I mean? There's enough black stars on each team, but they were afraid of the unknown, and I understand and respect that. But like I said, the WNBA has always been pushing the line because they've been fighting for equal footing since they started.